Hi, everyone. Hey, hey short people around here. <laughs> okay, I want to talk with you just a, a few moments um, about this great music, jazz. How many of you have heard jazz? Yeah? Now, it's kind of confusing in a way because there's something called smooth jazz today. Now, if I ask you if you like jazz, is it smooth jazz? Real jazz. Okay. Smooth jazz, it's a coined term, pretty much. That's what it is. And, but I'm here to talk with you about the most creative aspects of jazz and, and try to give you a little bit of a point of departure in how the music works. And I, t I talked earlier about compositions, like I write music. And someone, well, I, I always get asked questions when I do my workshops and clinics, how do I compose? What do I write first? Do I get the ideas from a, a, a melodic motif, a specific rhythm, uh, a specific chord progression? I used to write a lot of my material. I've written over 200 compositions, but I used to write a lot of my material because of one of those elements, either a rhythmic thing that I came up with or a melodic motif I had in my head. But now I, I, I write from the title, meaning if you have a title in your head, then you have a vision. You have a clear perspective of something that you want to write about. You with me? On this, so you start with that title. Now, once you get that title, you have to ask yourself objectively: Do I have the tools to be able to articulate whatever I need to articulate to get to my artistic intention? That, re that clearly will represent this title. Okay, so you have the idea, right? Now, are you prepared to get to that idea? Do you know what you have to do to get to that idea? And in order to get to that idea, you have to have a vast knowledge base of the criteria, meaning harmony, rhythm, melody, and just as importantly, but in a completely different way, working with people around you. Because you're ultimately going to need them to be able to help you get your point across. And that's one of the beauties about jazz because it teaches you, it's a very, it, it, it's a very, it's a music based on democracy, you know, working together to achieve a common purpose, a good purpose, and, you're, and it's an inclusive music. But you have to have the right ingredients, right? So how many of you have ever been in a position where you've been intimidated by something? Either you're having to give up get up in front of people like I am and give a speech to a group of people, that can be terrifying, can't it? Now, what makes you nervous? You know what makes you nervous? We get nervous because we're insecure. We're insecure because we're not prepared. If we are prepared, now this is, I'm, I'm saying this to you this way because you're early in the game, all right? I've been there, believe me, so I know what that is, what that's like, and all of us in this room have been there, so we know what that initial, you know, entrance into the, the game is all about. So you get, what jazz teaches you is how to get from point A to point Z in the most logical way, if it's done right. But to get to point A to point Z, you have to know the logistics of it, and jazz in regard of how it works with other people, how you work with other people, you have to know that person. You have to trust that other person. Like me being a drummer, working with that bass player. That bass player is the most important element for a drummer in the group. I have to know that person's intentions. I have to kind of anticipate what they're going to do, right? So you have to know your surroundings. So if you have a project, Let's say somebody asks you to build a building right there where that tennis court is. What's the first thing you look for? You look for the surroundings, right? You don't want to put something that looks like um, a McDonald's right there. 
because it won't fit into the landscape. So this is what I mean by if you have that idea, that initial idea in your head, a concept, then you know what to work for or work towards. So now you have your design, you get your people. How do you pick your people? You pick your people based on what they also know and what they can help you bring to, to the table to help you get your idea, right? How do you develop your ideas? You have to research, and that's the beautiful thing about jazz. There's, so, there's over 100 years history with jazz. So you have to go back, research the history from point A, and see how it evolved, see how it progressed, and see how it refined itself over time. This applies to you. You know, it's the same, same kind of philosophy. The more you research, the more you study, the more confidence you have, because the more ideas you have, the stronger your idea base. And that takes away all that insecurity. The other beautiful thing about jazz is that it's a fearless music. Louis Armstrong didn't play trumpet with fear. Mozart didn't play music and write music with fear. You can't design your projects or do your projects with fear. Do you know why? Because your professor is going to be able to tell you you're doing this with fear. And to get over fear, we have to take chances, artistic chances. That's the beautiful one, one of the many beautiful things about jazz because it encourages us to take chances. Now, if you play it safe all the time, if you only do what you know all the time, how are you growing? That's a question you have to ask yourself. But if you take a chance and go out and branch out and do say, hmm, you know, I'm going to try this. It may not work, but you know what? You do it the second time, it's going to work. And that's what we do in jazz. We have to play fearlessly. And we get that because of our base of information, our knowledge base, which enables us to play a lot more confidently, a lot more securely, and a lot more creative, I mean, creatively. Same principles apply to what you guys are doing. And you can use jazz as a model. Because what we do, it's, it's, it's you know, and plus we improvise. How many of you know what improvisation is? And I used this ex quick example in the last session. Let's say you were coming to hear a speaker give you a, a lecture on business or engineering, right? You know pretty much what the topic's going to be. All of a sudden, you find out six hours ago that the speaker is sick and can't make it. So they ask you to come in and fill in for that speaker to do the speech. So what do you do? You get your notes together, blah, 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 blah. You're probably a little nervous because short notice, right? But you, you know the, the gist of, the, of, of what you're supposed to, to talk about. So now you get there, you're, you're right off stage. Somebody comes up to the podium and they in, introduce you. You come out, applause. Hmm, where's that cheat sheet? What are you gonna do? Say, uh, excuse me, I'll be right back? No. You what? You improvise. Now, easier said than done, right? So how do you, now the best way to improvise, I see smiles on these faces because you know what I'm talking about. The best, <laughs> the best way to improvise is if you know the subject. If you're confident in the subject. The best jazz musicians are the ones that know the most. The best jazz musicians are also the best people. There are a lot of superior jazz musicians that are knuckleheads personally. So it's a combination platter kind of thing. You know, you have to know that subject. You have to know how to deliver that message logically, intelligently, focused, right? That's jazz. That's what we do. So it transcends me just sitting behind a set of drums and just playing rhythms or somebody playing piano over here, harmony, or somebody playing a saxophone over there. We have to work that together to create that one special kind of sound, right? You have to be a team player. That's what jazz teaches us. So that's my little speech on jazz. And I have maybe a couple of minutes to answer a couple of quick questions. Anybody have any questions about jazz? Ah, a question. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Well, it's in, that, you know, that's, that's a good question because I didn't start off playing jazz. You know, I grew up in the R&B era when R&B was good R&B and soul, you know, through the 60s and through the 70s. So you thought I was 27, right? <laughs> right. But in all seriousness, you know, I grew up in that area, in that era like Motown, you know, Stax Records, Isaac Hayes, Sam and Dave, Jackson 5, you know, into the 70s where the bands were, were cool, like Cool and the Gang, Earth, Wind and Fire, just getting started, all those great bands that we don't hear today unless it's like some senior tour or something like that. Um, then I went to college. I was in the military first, and then after I got out of the military, I went to college here in the 70s, late 70s. So I was a late student. And then I got into music education in college, and that's when I got into jazz. Because being a drummer, you know, just playing drums and being a timekeeper, you know, I just, uh, there had to be something more interesting in playing drums. And somebody said, well, have you heard jazz? And then I got turned on to a lot of the great jazz musicians, drummers like Max Roach and Kenny Clark, Art Blakey and Tony Williams and many, many more. So probably since about 78, 79, I've been playing jazz. And I've been hooked ever since, you know, but it took me a while. Because when I first heard it, honestly, it kind of sounded like a cat and a dog in a garbage can. You know, couldn't dance to it, couldn't hum the melodies, couldn't feel the beat, very syncopated. But then somebody said, well, Jay, this, there's a method to the madness, and this is how this works, and this is how this works, and then I got it. You know, and I've been, I love all kinds of music, but, but jazz is uh, where my heart and soul is. Maybe one more question? No, now, I know you're freshmen, you know, you're a little timid. You know, maybe you don't wanna, don't think your question might be a little silly, because it's not. Any more questions? So I, I encourage you to listen to jazz. Find it on the radio, find it online. You may not understand it at first. It's kind of overwhelming at first. But give it some time, be patient. And, and you'll find it to be very rewarding for you. Thank you.